Knowledge. knowledge and wisdom, son. Just talking about that uh, as a favorite uh, of the Wu-Tang solo records. Perhaps slightly undervalued, you know, only built for Cuban links. is on many people's radar as a great hip-hop record. But man, genius, Liquid Swords, although Killer Priest takes that whole song. Basic instructions before leaving Earth. Because as we all well know, the Wu-Tang was especially fond of acronym. The B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving Earth. Speaking of Earth, and speaking of basic instructions, let's go back to the beginning, shall we? My meditation today, Genesis 1, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, First jump off, of course, was male and female created he them. I know a lot of folks who've had a lot of struggles with the solely patriarchal bent of the Most High. Some of that, I believe, is a cultural ease of interpretation and understanding. Some of that, uh, I believe, is gospel truth. However... First and foremost, pencil in hand, because what says education like the ABCs and a pencil? Um, that God is indeed reflected in both sexes. I personally do not think that God has genitalia of any sort, uh, nor should we really be preoccupied with such a question or such an image. But that indeed God's very nature is reflected in both the male and the female. There are aspects of God revealed in, in us, in us as a man, meaning mankind, meaning humankind. And that's set out pretty clear, so you don't think man means just men. Male and female, he created them. We are all created by God and bear upon us the image of God. In different ways, mind you, not in exactly the same way. We do not bear the same image of God, which should be really quite obvious to us. But indeed, we are made in the image of God. Now, what that actually means, whether God looks like a regular Joe, what if God were one of us, uh, Joan Osborne um, sort of thing, Joan of Arcadia kind of thing. Um, I don't know, haven't seen him in the flesh in as such. I do not believe that is what is intended here, but I believe we are, we are Balinese shadow puppet versions of God, and that we are the barest whispers, and that we were created to be uh, eternal, and we are called to twin our souls to the likeness of God. And indeed, I think God taught us about how and what this truly means in at least two special ways I can think of. Maybe I'll think of a third so I can play my rule of threes out. Number one was by transmission of his law unto his people. Creation was really the first one. Uh, number two was in creation of the law, which then gives us an idea of image in terms of the, uh, the sort of reflective or the repetitions of behavior that would enable us to pursue righteousness and like eternal dwelling in Godness and in God image. And some of them are behavioral in terms of how to treat other others who are made in the image of God. But indeed, we are not in and of ourselves fully uh, God <laughs> unto ourself, but we are called to pursue that which makes us more and more in that image, more and more God-like. Some of those things are behavioral, and the law came to teach us how to behave towards God, in whose image we were created, but still we are created by and still are children of subservient to in, in a perfect relationship. And the law came to say, okay, because you think you're God, because pretty much every human being thinks they're God, right? 
uh, in one form or another. He says, okay, well here, for example, here are the things that rejoice me, and you were created in my image, so here's the things that should rejoice you. Here's my law, laid out clean and pure. And I think we found quite quickly, and even now if you look upon his law, you can find quite easily that some part of you exists in enmity to that which God states is truly of him and in him. And we struggle. We struggle in it. And if we were indeed God, we would struggle at no such thing. Such a thing would be easily accomplished. But it wasn't. And indeed, his law inflamed and aroused in us a desire to actually flee our very own uh, creation in imagehood. And that law, uh, Paul talks about this too, that's like, we knew, I knew not sin before the law showed me what sin was. And that's sort of a, a little, like, mind play, what he's doing there. Because indeed, sin existed before. Sin exists in the moment that we choose our own uh, path of, of righteousness and godhood over the godhood that's already right there. And the law came to then reflect and arouse in us the fact, and to sort of proof, make proof positive, that indeed we are no gods, and we are not even in control of ourselves, let alone anything else. And then two, or three really, creation, fall, law, and then after arousing this, uh, uh, the rebellion within us, and proving to us that indeed we are, we are no gods ourselves, and indeed that we are really meant to be images, reflections, and eternal reflections, and fueled, empowered eternal reflections of that God. We, here, let me flip. I want to read this thing, if I can find it. You know, I'm not finding it right now. <laughs> Let's go straight to the third, which is, how, in what way are we to live in the image of God? Because we are flesh. Okay, now I recognize I exist in enmity to goodness. I exist in enmity to that which I was created to be. I was created to be in the likeness of God and to be living in relationship, communion, power of, of indeed something resembling Godhood. But this is broken. Why can I not do this? The law shows me I'm, I'm pretty terrible at this. So how do I then live in that image, being that I am broken and I am in flesh, and you are in eternalness, God? And these behaviors I cannot really quite ever muster. I'm constantly having to apologize for and sacrifice and, and redemption. And God, in his, in his mercy, I still don't know wisdom because it makes no logical sense to a human mind. It seems foolish to offer us uh, such mercy. As, as to sacrifice of himself and to lower himself. But indeed, the creator enrobed himself in the flesh of the creation to say, oh, you really want to know the answer to this? You're struggling, you're struggling, you're trying. Have you figured out you can't do it on your own yet? Yes. Yes, we get it, Lord. We get it. Okay, well, here is how you exist in my image. And he came, the word became flesh. The word of God became flesh itself in the personhood of of Yeshua, Jesu Christo, the Messiah, spoken of, done, and indeed the law, the living law, that we might have an image to emulate. And it's like, you know what, thank you. I've appreciated all the esoteric lessons and the, the elaborate proof that yes, I'm I am I'm not God, I'm not in control of myself nor anything else. Show me then how to walk in your image in what I do have in this fallen form. And we have that in Christ. It's like if we didn't get it the first, second time, gives us the third runaround. And says, okay, here, walk in this. Here's how to walk not only in the truth of the law, but in the spirit of the law. But Lord, I've tried that. I can't do it. I can't do it. By sacrificing of himself in this realm, and in some way the eternal spiritual realm, which I don't even know exactly 100% how that works, all I know is that I am empowered to live far more righteously than I've ever been able to in any sort of like rough, tough, tumble, must, muster and, and uh, try. But in the blood of Christ alone can I walk in righteousness. In his sacrifice alone am I fueled to really reach anything like the truth of Godhood that I was created to be and to bear his image, walk in that image. Day to day I surrender to it. Peace be unto you. Amen and Selah.